through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light shine through for you? In the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through, it's true, baby let the light shine through, if you believe it's true, baby won't you let the light shine through.
Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series live at the Richmond Spring 200 tonight. A good one on tap, another short track, and we are getting ready for the action here tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You are watching Austin Green on Ghost Racing Network qualifying. Just completed. Drivers getting gridded up, getting ready to go, and so are we. Here's your starting order here tonight for the Richmond Spring 200. Taking the pole, it's going to be Austin Fitzgerald and the 74. Still looking for that first win of the season. Tonight could be his night. Rolling off in, uh, excuse me, in second on the outside is going to be Tyler Marble for Team Marble I Racing. Adam Johnson, Jared Bundy, row number two. Jeff Marble rounding out your top five. Scott Glasso to his outside in sixth. Andrew Moraz, Quentin Clark in row number four. And it's Ryan Haynes and Nick Sitchie rounding out your top ten. Row number six, Ty Eopolito for Dynamic Autosport with Jacob Musso to his outside in 12th. Thomas O'Hara, 13th. Alan Pajari in 14th. Cody Matthews, Brian Coughlin in row number eight with Danny Gutierrez, Tracy Powers in row number nine, and Jeff Shutt and Brandon Saylor rounding out your top 20. Kyle Oakley starts in 21st. Greg Bartlett back in 22nd. Row number 12 is going to be Mark Zabak, the Canadian driver, alongside Todd Shiro in the sixth car. West Hurt Jr. starts 25th. Michael Mueller, 26th. Andrew Russo, Bill Benedict in row number 14. Johnny McCulchuk, 29th. And Glenn Grigsby. Rounding out your top 30. Roger Shelton starts 31st. Kenneth Bartholomew, the rookie, in 32nd. Jake Hicks, another one of Dynamic Autosport rookies. He will roll off 33rd. Brett Spott, 34th. Anthony Hanley in 35th with Troy Baker, 36th. Ryan Shiro, 37th. Jeffrey Souza, 38th. And Christopher Hall rounding up the field tonight. He will roll off 39th. All right, race info tonight. Again, it's the Richmond Spring 200 for the Fast Track Summit Racing Cup Series. 200 laps to schedule distance tonight. Everybody does have 100% fuel, four sets of tires. No fast repairs, open setups as always. Three green-white checkers. Overcast track, 66 degrees outside. Winds at five miles an hour. And track temp, extremely cool at 68 degrees. Richmond Raceway, just under three-quarters of a mile in length. High bank short track, a little bit similar to Bristol. Not quite the same point being. It's going to be a lot of great racing here tonight. We're excited for it. Winner actually getting the sweep last season was Joshua Watson, not returning for this season. So going to have a new winner here at Richmond no matter what the deal is tonight. Or excuse me, it wasn't a sweep last season. I meant to say it was Cody Richardson and Joshua Watson. And, of course, neither of those drivers have returned this season. So going to get a new winner regardless of who gets the job done tonight. But, I mean, some big stories coming into this race. Again, Austin Fitzgerald and Tyler Marble. Still with maybe not quite the start to the season that you certainly would have expected for these two. I mean, plenty of skill. We saw both of these drivers make a final four appearance last season. Starting on the front row tonight, both drivers. A little bit of a winless streak here. Need to see if they can get the job done tonight. Tire's going to be wearing quite a bit. That fuel window, courtesy of Johnny McCulchuk, right about, I believe he said, might have been 100. It was 130-something laps, I believe. The point is, they can, nobody's going to go that far. The farthest green, green, green. we'll see anybody try in terms of strategy would be 100 laps on fuel. Here we go. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at Richmond. Caution is out for the first time here tonight. Trouble further back in the pack, and looks like it may be a little bit more of a mess than we thought here back in turn number four. We got one around trying to get it pointed back in the right direction. That's Michael Mueller, one of the Riot Motorsports teammates who, on the opposite end of what we talked about with your pole sitter in the second place car, he has been on a hot streak here as a rookie out of the gates for the season. But this is definitely not the way that he had planned to start his race here tonight. And look, and I don't see a ton of damage, and that's pretty good news because, again, these guys, they don't get fast repairs. So any damage you get, you got to go repair the manual way, if you will. And a lot of times, if that damage is past the point of repair, it can really hinder your race. Good news would be even if you have damage here to track like Richmond, it's not going to matter quite as much. But again, Michael Mueller, two wins already on the season as a rookie, tied for the most of the season to start things off. Let's go back and see. Exactly how he got out of shape here on lap number one. So this is going into turn three. Looks like he was alongside. Ooh, this track's going to start way out in front here. Can't tell exactly who it was that first got around there. It looked like one of the blue, white, and black cars. And we'll get up here and figure out exactly who it was. And, ooh, was that the 27 of Jeff Shutt? I got to wonder. I saw... Let's, let's play this here on the blimp cam and see if that was indeed... No, it was not Jeff Shutt. He's even further ahead of Jeff Shutt here than we had initially thought. 
and ooh, is that I still I'm trying to figure out exactly who this is here. You know, we got these guys down kind of by memory. That's Cody Matthews. That's that I was gonna say more so by paint schemes. And so usually when you get a close up view right off the gate, you have a good idea of who it is. And that was indeed the 10 of Cody Matthews. So let's back this up just about half a lap before. See if we can pick out exactly what gets this thing started here. So here's Cody Matthews on the backstretch. He gets turned out of line, but it almost looked like it was trouble in front here. And go back to the blimp cam one more time. All right, so watch Cody Matthews in the 10. I think this starts with the double zero there of Quentin Clark. I think he's going to be the first car that actually gets sideways, gets out of shape right here. And then it starts to kind of snowball behind him. All right, so here's the double zero. He's already a little bit wide off the turn right here. So he kind of work in that third lane and then... So they get out of two. Car's just tight on him here. He bounces off the wall. And then behind him, oh, man, the 13 with a huge blinking issue right there. And that's what ultimately causes the first contact. As he's still blinking around at this point. Everybody's trying to figure out exactly where he is, what happened, where he went. And then behind, you saw Cody Matthews. He's going to get turned out of line here. And then it's just going to amplify from this point on. Watch the 10 as they see all this checking up up ahead. There's the 13. Now almost embroidered in another car, if you will. That turns Jacob Muzo around, and then the 08 of Danny Gutierrez gets down into Cody Matthews. There's the 77 getting turned around as well. Gets back into Cody Matthews, and at this point, it just really starts to become kind of a parking lot, if you will, as everybody's trying to find a way through this, and it's honestly just kind of a clogged track at this point. So not the way that everybody wanted to get this thing started, but sometimes that's what you get with these crazy restarts here. But... Not really much of a racing incident or an incident at fault is, man, I saw Bill Benedict piling in there late. He had nowhere to go either. This was more so just a bit of an internet issue that kind of sparked the trouble. And after that, it was just classic Richmond short track of everybody trying to find a way around and really not that many areas to go. Take one more view of this before we go back live for the green flag. And Wesser Jr. in the sixth. Todd Shiro you see getting together there in turn number three. That partially led to what ultimately got Michael Mueller turned around as well. All right, so let's go back live. It's almost going to be carbon copy here of what we had for the initial restart. One lap just about complete under green, five under caution. As pace car rolls off, here we go back into the restart zone. Fitzgerald and Marble. Green flag, green flag, green flag. back in the air for the second time here tonight at Richmond. Good looking to restart this time for Austin Fitzgerald. He'll get clear and have lane choice before they even get down to turn number one. Rest of the field this time you can see a little bit smoother as we take that zoomed out camera view down the back straight away everybody's still jockeying for position but it is austin fitzgerald the number 74 driver out of las vegas nevada and right now said nevada i meant to say nevada but right now he is starting to pull a little bit of a gap on second place tyler marble already has it up to three tenths of a second Speaking of three, there's the number three car of Jared Bundy. Just behind him is Scott Glasso. Quentin Clark, quick recovery after that close call just a few laps ago and your first caution of the night. And right now, this second lane working pretty good. I'm sure some of these guys were taking notes from, of course, the A opens during the week, maybe even NIS along with the Coke Series race here. And what we saw with that was really up to three lanes of racing available. Now, the cooler the track temp is, I got to believe that it's going to make that inside line that much faster. And notice the start time of the race right now. Sim time looks like it is about 7.20. So that sun going to continue to go down as the lights get brighter. The speeds are only going to get faster. The grip level is going to pick up. And we're going to see a lot crazier restarts here as the night goes on. Let's give you an onboard view now with your current leader, Austin Fitzgerald, around this .75 mile racetrack. As he rockets up to the start finish line, here you go. Hug the outside wall. Got to get yourself a nice, nice arc. How about almost 150 miles an hour before they get on the brakes down into turn number one? Runs just a little bit of a diamond, but overall, trying to hug that yellow line. You don't want to get the apron unless the car is really struggling to turn. Then you might consider it through three and four. A little bit more of a diamond. Gets a nice arc off. And right now, car having no issues. Nice and smooth again off the turn. The big thing you worry about is as this run goes on All right, man. and those rear tires wear out, out, will become an issue. Here we go. Caution back out for the second time here tonight. Trouble down over in turn number one and two. We got a car slow. I believe that was just behind Ryan Shiro here. can tell exactly who it was. Might have been 
Ooh, I think that was the 10 of Cody Matthews, at least. We saw getting back up to speed. Not sure if he was the driver involved in this one. I don't think he was. Getting some reports here that Jeffrey Souza may have gotten a little damage in this, along with multiple others. Again, second caution here in just under 15 laps. 200 laps in total tonight, so we still got plenty of racing to go, but anytime you see a little bit of this trend of early cautions, you always get nervous as a driver on. If you have a strategy or a car set up for a long run, how likely it is that we're going to run that strategy. All right, here we go. This one starts on the front stretch. It looks like Mark Zabakin. That may have been Cody Matthews. I really couldn't tell. Very interesting initial look right there. Let's back this all the way up here. Cody Matthews was still in the pit, so he had nothing to do with this wreck. And so then next up, I'm going to go here to see if we can find how this starts with Mark Zabak so much. Does it look like, was it maybe, I couldn't tell. Oh, it's Thomas O'Hara. It looks like had an issue here as he was really, really slow coming off of turn number four. And then that's kind of what sparked the initial chaos, if you will. Thomas O'Hara, of course, in that 07 car. And watch here. Oh, I think he's going to get some help. And this very well might quickly answer that question that we had about what got him out of shape. That is the 24 Brandon Saylor, one of the rookies on Team Marble iRacing as they come through three and four. Yikes, just a little bit of argy-bargy there on the bottom from Brandon Saylor as he gets into the left rear. Tom Sohara now. Everybody's trying to check up Michael Mueller. Tags Jeff shut in the process. Then Mark Zabak gets into the 99. That sends him back into the 27. And you see Kyle Oakley, he's going to try to split the bottom here. Unfortunately, no luck. Now Kenneth Bartholomew gets piled into. Johnny McCulchuk, nowhere to go. And I mean, they're still trying to miss this thing. Look at this. The wreck never ends. I mean, this collected initially what looked like there was only going to be a couple. And collected probably a handful more. So there was the 13 of Nick Sitchi who we saw. Kind of the cause of that first wreck due to internet connection. Get involved in this one as well. And here we go. A couple different angles of this. And everybody doing a good job in terms of none of the wrecks. At least none of the two that we've had so far tonight have really been hard wrecks that have caused a lot of damage for any drivers. But... You know, a wreck's a wreck at the end of the day, and any damage you can avoid getting is certainly something you want to try to do, but sometimes some of these accidents are just really unavoidable, and right here, we're going to see this from another angle. There's the contact between the 24 and the 07, and, you know, I, I, no, agree, no aggression here on Sailor. I mean, I don't think he was trying to push the issue, just maybe a little bit of a misjudgment. Again, you know, rookie in the series, still trying to get his bearings, and I think here to a degree, as he gets in the corner, and... I don't know if the gap's really there. It's close, and in Sailor's defense, certainly looked like O'Hara was leaving a gap there. But how wide that gap was, not sure. And if it was worth trying to take this early is another question in of itself. And, you know, the problem is when you come to a track like Richmond, it just it doesn't take much to get these cars turned around in the wrong direction. And, I mean, he barely, barely tapped the 07, but as you saw, that was all it took. And then there's Mark Sabat, Kyle Oakley. I think Johnny McCulchuk the end of the day really gets the worst damage out of this one but as for everybody else i think they're gonna be able to get back rolling maybe just a couple band-aids on the car they'll be back to two and three wide racing here as we get the one to go signal austin fitzgerald still being scored as your leader tyler marble in second jeff marble back in third andrew moraz in fourth scott glasso fifth adam johnson in sixth quentin clark seventh with jared bundy in eighth alan pajari ninth and ryan haynes Rounding out your top 10. 17 laps completed again, so certainly starting to push that pitch strategy out a little bit further. In fact, if you're one of the guys that's committing to a long strategy, I believe you can make it on one stop from now. Again, you could go about 100 laps safely on a tank of fuel if you're saving tire as well. So, again, looks to be that that's about the farthest we're probably going to see anybody push it. Here we go. Green flag back in the air at Richmond. Good restart, Boston Fitzgerald, but notice that this time, Looks like Tyler Marble is going to stick just a little bit closer. Hangs with him just about through the entrance of turn one now. Austin Fitzgerald looking to stretch it down the back stretch and into turn number three. All the racing right now is out back. Quentin Clark looking in the middle. A little bit of the chrome horn right there to the four. Scott Glass. So now he's going to split him three wide down the front stretch. And I'm thinking Glasso may not have been too happy with that, but cooler heads will prevail as the four. It's going to back off, take that spot from Pajari, and lose two positions to Jared Bundy and Quentin Clark. Pajari trying to slot in line here just in front of one of the BMP racing teammates of Ryan Haynes. 
Haynes has some pressure out back from Taiyo Polito and Brian Conklin. That's a rookie versus a veteran there, the 37 versus the 19. That is the 08 of Danny Gutierrez, along with the 25 of Tracy Powers. Was her junior another one of those cars trying to see if he can really find anywhere in line right now? Just has not had any luck at the moment. You see where he stands currently back in that 16th spot, but last week's winner, first win of the season for Wes Hurd Jr. And so you knew he was gonna have some good momentum now and here at Richmond tonight, I think he was feeling relatively optimistic about it, but to see how this thing pans out for him, back up front we go, Austin Fitzgerald still being scored as your leader. And now it's two of the Team Marvel iRacing teammates under fire from one of the Riot Motorsports rookies of Andrew Moraz, three wide down the front stretch. Jeff Marble not going to bail out here. He's going to try to roll this outside, see if he can get a good arc, maybe cross both of these guys up. Oh, Tyler Marble, his teammate, gets into him. Hard contact there from the 48 of Tyler Marble. That is two teammates right there that the last two you'd expect to see get together. And I think that was just a little bit of a racing deal right there, but you can see it has put some damage on the right front for Jeff Marble. Not sure how much, if any, it's done to his teammate, Tyler. I think that was just kind of part of getting off a turn two there, three wide. Talked about Jeff wasn't just going to give it up, I think, at the same time. From what we saw, Tyler Marble certainly looked like he got really, really tight. And as a result, this was not pretty. Watch this here. Coming out of turn number two. See the 15's up top. He's Oh, well, I take that back. That wasn't so much Tyler Marble getting tight as that was the 97 there of Andrew Moraz. Getting into the 48 and sending him up the track here. And watch this. Go from the chopper view again. So Tyler, not sure. I mean, you got to assume he knows that Jeff's up top. So he's trying to pin it on the door here of the 97 Mraz. And I mean, they're just, they're running really, really tight. And it looks to me like once they kind of get together initially there, I mean, for what it's worth, Tyler was certainly holding him down pretty tight there right about the apron. I mean, naturally these cars are going to slide up a little bit. So you got to give Mraz a little something to work with there and, I think maybe he was just getting ready to go up, get a good exit, but just before then, they get connected. Once they get connected, get slightly stuck together. It sends Tyler Marble up, and then Jeff Marble, of course, nowhere to go. And by Mark Zabach, or excuse me, that was the 0-2 of Adam Johnson and a couple others. Had to make some really quick evasive maneuvers there to miss that one. So as a result, out of the scuffle, if you will, Andrew Moraz comes away with second place. Now looking to track down the Dynamic Auto Sports veteran. One of the last... Season championship for contenders, Austin Fitzgerald. He's got a teammate, though, Andrew Moraz, that is back in third. Quentin Clark, we saw get his first win at a short track this season as well. Phoenix Raceway, so we know that he's going to have pretty good speed here tonight as well. Scott Glasso back in fifth. Tyler Marble in sixth. Jared Bundy in seventh. Ty Iopolito in eighth. Alan Pajari in ninth. And Adam Johnson rounding out your top ten. He's side by side right now with Alan Pajari. Looks like so is the 37 of Brian Conklin with the 39 of Ryan Haynes. The 08. Danny Gutierrez tried to roll the corner there. Just gets off a little bit soon. And, you know, really right now we've seen so many racing lines. You haven't even kind of been able to narrow it down to which line seems to be the fastest. I mean, the three approaches that I've seen most common here tonight is guys wrapping the bottom, guys trying to roll the top, and guys trying the diamond approach, which, of course, you can really only do if you've got a little bit of space to work with. Austin Fitzgerald, of course, been working a little bit of that diamond approach, and it's been working well for him so far, but now going to be kind of the first test here tonight as he's getting ready to have some pressure from the 97 of Andrew Moraz. You can see that Moraz does have a little bit of right front damage from that contact between him and Tyler Marble just about a handful of laps or so ago. Here in iRacing, see the virtual stance. I know it's a little bit of a quick topic off track if you will but if we go to actually we'll go back to the nose cam here i mean what a cool place richmond still is but what a cool place it used to be similar to what you might have saw at bristol grandstands that went all the way around the racetrack look at the suites the big double decker suite as well up top i mean back in the heyday when nascar had a lot more bleachers at richmond than they do now of course but still good to see it in the sim and the track of course the newer style of the track i'm sure if richmond's actually ever had a repave at least not any time recent. So all these guys, nothing real different here tonight. I could think the best comparison for this track to any other track we would see in the circuit, but not in the schedule, would probably be Iowa, which of course is almost just like a little bit bigger of a version of Richmond. And now we will go to, I believe it's North Wilkesboro 
for the All-Star Race. So similar practice for there. I know a lot of guys going to be excited for that one. And, of course, we've already been to Bristol. Next week going to be Martinsville. So any short track experience you can get here at the beginning of the season, certainly going to pay dividends. And don't forget that that championship race is at a short track in of itself, Phoenix Raceway. We've already went there once. We'll be going back there to crown a champion. So a lot of guys would like to get their first win of the season here at a short track to know that they've got the speed to get the job done. See if they can get some of the luck and make it through the season to get to that point. All right, well, Austin Fitzgerald continues to lead. Battle for the lead has closed in a little bit, but also at the same time simmered down. This gives us a chance to go back and indeed go through some of the driver cams that we do have here on the night. Quite a few guys tonight. But starting first with the 48 machine of Tyler Marble. Pretty eventful night so far. Qualified in second. The driver out of Buffalo, New York, with a little bit of a struggle here just a little bit ago as there was contact between him and the rookie, Andrew Moraz. Got the 48 up into his teammate, Jeff Marble, but was able to collect it, keep going, and now working on trying to recover and get back closer to the front of the field. Going back a couple spots, actually a couple spots ahead right now of Tyler Marble is his teammate, Jeff Marble. Don't forget Jeff on the receiving end of that contact that we saw between the 97 and the 48. It was on three wide on the outside, but since then, it doesn't look like it's affected his car too much. Still running up in the top five, and one of the drivers that loves when we can get on long runs, especially at tracks like this where tire wear is going to certainly be a factor. So right now, I don't think Jeff's worried so much about the damage as he's hoping this thing can go green for a little bit. And he have a, can have a chance to show what that car's got here tonight. As we move on back to our next driver cam here tonight, all the way back, in 22nd position, it's Kyle Oakley. That is one of the SWM Motorsports drivers. Looking calm, cool, and collected here tonight. So far, he's gained, actually lost a position. I meant to say, I meant to say he's just behind another one of our drivers that we have an onboard for, Ryan Sure, We'll get to him in just a minute. But, you know, the 17, he's had a couple of big chances this season. We saw him last season, and it wasn't quite maybe as much speed as we initially were expecting. But so far this season come out of the gate team's been looking strong and the 17 has been running well i think bristol was probably his closest chance to get grabbing that first win of the season didn't quite work out but again short track was bristol short track is richmond same style of racing similar not going to say the same but the point is he's going to be a threat tonight keep an eye on that 17 car ryan shiro first time of the season carrying an onboard camera for us here tonight currently runs back in the 23rd position, but he is up 14 spots from where he started this race at. On a nice steady wheel, but you notice what you heard right there is that those back tires are starting to slowly but surely give way now. And the more they give way, the harder it's going to be to handle these cars, especially out of the corner. you got to be very, very delicate with getting that throttle down. It's, it's easy to get those rear tires spinning and easy to get the car looped around. Not something you have to want to have to deal with here this early in the race. Ryan Haynes, one of the BMP racing teammates, out of Center Hill, Florida, showing you another factor that we didn't talk about just yet tonight, but it's certainly going to be something that we'll see. I would say probably about 60% of the field, at least, if not everyone doing, and that is shifting here in the corners. See, he grabs the sequential, gets down into fourth, into the turn, and then as they get on the straightaway, puts the power down, back into fifth, he goes. And I know iRacing and one of the recent updates tried to limit shifting, but still seeing it here tonight, so whatever they did, so they didn't change much. And now, of course, with it being open, setups guys can adjust their gear ratio. Some guys may not have to shift depending on the way they have it set up, but again, I think for the most part, majority of the field will. The guys that are going for more long run setups and tire saving, maybe not. As we see, Glenn Clark in the double zero, currently in that third position, and he's not shifting. So he stays in fifth and is rolling fifth around the entirety of this .75 mile oval right now. First time that we have that we have had Quentin. One of our driver cams here tonight, and then one of the sponsors for the league, Jeff Shutt himself, and one of the No Excuses Racing drivers, carrying an onboard camera for us tonight as well. He is up one position from where he started in 18th. Now again, involved a little bit of that melee that we saw in the first caution of the night, and still just over 150 laps to go, but he's got some ground to make up. Trying to work to the inside of one of the veterans here in Brian Conklin, but no luck just yet, so we'll have to back it down and try it again. And it's so tough here when they get two by two. You're trying to decide which lane to go with, which lane's got more speed at the time. And if you make a mistake, it's an easy way to get yourself in a pinch and really not be able to make a move at all. So 
Definitely, I think part of the reason we're seeing guys be so careful about it tonight in their approach, and then Johnny McCulchuk, who unfortunately was involved in that second wreck. Well, we'll go to him in a minute. Caution is out now. Trouble towards the back of the field here with Cody Matthews. Saw him involved in an earlier incident. And I do see a little bit of right rear damage there for the 10, so you gotta wonder, did Cody Matthews get some help or is that maybe contact from the wall? Looks like he was able to obviously continue on. He'll be able to drive it to the pits for any repairs that he needs, but second incident again that he's been involved in here on the night, so definitely not the start that Cody was looking for, but this is coming off of turn number two. Actually, I take that. Let's see here. Go to the chopper view. And it watches the 90 of Bill Benedict is going to try to roll to his inside. This is off of turn two, by the way. Ooh, the 10 gets in the wall. That's what happens. Cody Matthews just getting a little bit tight. And when he bounces off the wall, by that time, Bill Benedict had already had the run committed to it. They get together, and that sends Cody Matthews down into that inside wall. And then see where he gets most of the damage is when he backs it into that opening right there. Which is used for, of course, when the safety trucks have to get out the drivers in real life. But there's the contact. And locks it down. Man, if he, I almost think if he locks it down there, he either doesn't touch the wall at all, or if anything, just barely taps it. But lets it keep rolling and definitely does a little bit more damage than what he was initially on track to get. Give you a couple different angles of this one. And so nobody else collected. First time that we've had the chance to say that here tonight. Just about every wreck we've seen so far, there's been multiple cars, but not the case right here. Cody Matthews, Bill Benedict, only two to tangle. I don't think Benedict really got any damage. A little bit of a close call there as well for the 77 of Greg Bartlett, who you saw sneak by the outside, but was able to do just that and doesn't get any damage either. So as we do go back live up front now, we're going to get the one to go signal potentially this time. And all of a sudden we start to throw a little bit more questions into the strategy play here with 50 laps complete. And again, about the longest we expect guys to run from this point, maybe 100 laps if you're feeling a little bit risky. And with that, you'd be able to make it to about lap 150, maybe a little bit further. Still can't make it all the way just yet, but getting closer and closer to, of course, being in that fuel window right now. Looks like Andrew Mraz, Austin Fitzgerald, and everybody else who you see up here at the front, they did go down to pit, took tires and fuels. No surprise there. You got four sets in total, so certainly got to make sure you use them at the right times. But now... I don't know if we'll see guys pit until maybe we get to at least lap 80, hoping probably that they can all make it closer to at least lap 100 before they have to worry about taking the next set of tires. So Austin Fitzgerald is still being scored as your leader. Andrew Moraz in second. Scott Glasso third. Quentin Clark back in fourth. Tyler Marble in fifth. Jeff Marble sixth. Jared Bundy seventh with Adam Johnson in eighth. Ty E. Polito in ninth. And Alan Pajari currently rounding out your top ten. Boy. You know, I hate to say it, but what a disappointment for Alan Pajari last week. Had so much speed. We heard Jeff Marble talk about it in the post-race interviews. But well, after that contact between, of course, the 15 and the 34, brought Alan Pajari's night to an end. Just that one slip-up cost him a chance at what could have been his first win of the season with the speed we know he had at Auto Club. Got the win the season prior. Things just not really meant to be there. And it looks like we do have some people in the chat. Good to see everybody tuning in here tonight. I hope you are enjoying the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series here at Richmond on Ghost Racing Network. Karen Williams, good to see you. Says, good evening, Ghost. Happy to have you here, Karen. Says, O2. Anthony Hanley says, good luck, gents. Internet froze on pace labs. Had to turn left, so I didn't hit anyone. Rest in peace. Well, we hate to hear that, Anthony, but we appreciate you checking in and letting us know. Says, got pinched. Assuming he's referring to that incident between Tyler Marble and, of course, his Riot Motorsports teammate of Andrew Moraz. Yeah, certainly looked a little bit that way from our point of view as well. All right, well, here we go. Going to be 53 laps complete when they cross the start-finish line this time. Austin Fitzgerald leads them back into the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air at Richmond. And it's a great restart as already. We got guys thinking about fanning out, but no three wide. Going to be available by the time they get down to turn number one. Real battle is what speed does Andrew Mraz have here on the short run? against Austin Fitzgerald. 
trying to roll the outside. He does carry a bit more momentum down the straight. The problem is 74 rolls such a good corner on the bottom that he actually jumps clear of the 97 before they get down to one. Man, Mraz looks like he got in deep into the corner, maybe did tap the rear end of Austin Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald now side by side, but it's the 97 who has the preferred lane on the inside. Does he push the issue here, try to work him up the track? Doesn't, in fact, he'll bail out of it now. Fitzgerald able to roll a little bit more speed. You can see that Mraz was trying just about everything there to hold it on the left quarter panel of Fitzgerald, trying to get a little bit of a side draft before they get down to turn number one. Caution is out, 97 goes around as well. Andrew Mraz hard into the inside wall. Wreck it out back and up front. Andrew Mraz with damage after what a crazy turn of events. I had just turned my eyes to the scoring pylon to see who was involved. Look up and next thing you know, the 97 gets involved himself as it looked like he just got loose and then overcorrected. I have not quite seen something like that here in a while. I mean, it looked like everything was okay here. We had the caution out back for what looked like Tracy Powers and multiple others. And let's see, first of all, I guess how the accident happens. One that did bring out the caution. There's the 08 of Danny Gutierrez. He's going to get on the apron here as they roll into turn number one. Not sure if he gets loose or what happens, but when he gets on the apron, the car just spins out on him. And see a couple guys that just not going to be able to check up in time, of course, when they slide up. And this one, there certainly was some big hits. Let's go on board first here with Danny Gutierrez to see if he just gets loose or just not sure what happened here. But we downshifts and yeah, sure enough, looks like the back end starts sliding out and doesn't take much. We talked about it earlier. This time it wasn't contact, but once the back end did slide out again, these guys still on relatively cold tires here for this restart. As you try to get them up to temps, things can get a little sketchy sometimes and as he slides back up the track, Wester Jr., last week's winner, nowhere to go. Conklin's going to plow into the back of him as he also had nowhere to go. 12 with the tank slapper to the outside wall. And then Brian Conklin kind of gets sandwiched here. And there's the spin for Tracy Powers. There's going to be a couple others actually get involved in this with nowhere to go. Six just comes to a halt, but multiple bumpers, including off the eight and the 37. You see laying on track. That will be damage that will certainly... Bring an end to any chances of having a competitive shot here tonight. For Danny Gutierrez, Brian Conklin, Wes Hurt Jr. potentially as well. As you saw his bumper fall off. Tracy Powers, I did see get tagged, go for a spin, but I don't think the damage was too bad. And then, of course, it looked like there everybody else was also able to miss it. Now, this was a separate incident with your leader that happened basically right as the caution flew. Watch Andrew Mraz here as they come off of turn number two. I think he just gets loose. Yeah, he does. He's trying desperately to stay in the throttle there and fools gold sometimes when the car starts to spin and you think you can save it while staying on the throttle. Richmond, not a track where that's really a viable option. And once he overcorrected back to the left, you can see it just shot that car straight to the inside wall. And this looked like a pretty heavy hit as well here. There's the overcorrection to the right, trying to save it. Doesn't want to turn into traffic. And wow, what a close call for Quentin Clark. I think it's actually going to get some damage of his own as a result of missing this and getting collected with somebody else. But, yeah, you saw that temporarily ripped the front bumper off for Andrew Mraz. So, boy, what a bad break for not only some of the guys involved in that further back caution or further back incident that brought out the caution, but also the Riot Motorsports teammates who ended up getting two cars involved in this one. Here's the view from Quentin Clark. I mean, he gets into his teammate here once. There's just no way he can miss him. But now... Doing a really good job of staying aggressive on the brakes and misses him, but now as a result, spins the car out himself and gets tagged by a couple of guys. And I was wondering if one of them was potentially his teammate here. No, I think it's going to be the four of Scott Glasso. As he spins, no, Glasso actually misses. Oh, it's Jared Bundy. Oh, man, nowhere to go. And then Adam Johnson, the rookie. Ryan Haynes as well. Been definitely a pr relatively messy start to the race. I mean... 60 laps, four cautions isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just more or less the amount of chaos that we've had and the amount of cars that have taken damage before we are even halfway through this nearly 200-mile event. And so guys going to have to try to start to calm things down here a little bit. Otherwise, not going to have cars to make it to the end of this race at this point. But for this restart, as Pace Car pulls off, field in the hands of Austin Fitzgerald and Scott Glasso. 
First time on the front row for Scott Glasso here tonight. Green flag back in the air. Marvel spinning up. He's going to go around. Wrecking big on the front stretch. Caution is out. As there are still guys trying to miss this one, all trying to shoot the gap. Looks like Jake Hickson in the grass as everybody now able to get spun back in the right direction and get back going. Tyler Marble, the first one to go spinning, just looked like, I mean, I initially thought it was tire spin unless he got some help from out back, which certainly can't rule out as a potential possibility. So we go under caution now for the fifth time here tonight. All right, let's back it up first. And, you know, again, when the fields are this close, all it takes is one mistake on a restart to pile them up here in a hurry. And watch this from the onboard view of Tyler Marble to start things. Here we go. Oh, yeah, he definitely spins the tires there pretty bad. In fact, yeah, he's trying a first gear restart here. And watch the gearbox. I want to make sure he doesn't get hit here before he spins the tires. No, he doesn't. He just spins them all by himself, and then at that point, of course, Jared Bundy and company, they've got nowhere to go. So now it just becomes a melee. So you got guys committing high. A couple people just stop, which is, of course, a good idea when they start wrecking. A couple guys trying to shoot through. Watch this from a little bit more of a zoomed out view. Watch how far back this stack up on the restart goes. Taio Polito, Jared Bundy, nothing they can do. Tyler Marbles may be lucky here that he gets spun down to the grass and out of the way. Otherwise... This may have ended quite a bit worse here for the 48. So you saw he was able to continue on. Johnny McCulchuk gets tagged in that as well. A little bit of damage for him. So, not really too much to that one. It's just, you know, I, I'm not too surprised we saw it happen here tonight. Again, short tracks. These guys are running a lot more horsepower than some of the other tracks we go to. Sometimes, especially if you've got a little bit of wear on the tires, it can be easy to spin them, so... Definitely a mistake that we don't see very often from a guy like Tyler Marble, but happens to the best of us and catches the 48 off guard. And now it's going to cost him just about all his track position is he'll have to go in, maybe patch up some repairs. And boy, he's going to have a lot of work ahead of him here now the rest of the way. All right, so Austin Fitzgerald still being scored as your leader here. Scott Glasso second, Jeff Marble third, Adam Johnson fourth, and Alan Pajari Running out your top five. Well, what about the job that Johnny McCulchuk is doing right now? Currently sits up 14 positions in that 15th spot. And he is one of our guys that's carrying an onboard camera for us here tonight. Teammate, of course, well, one of the no excuses teammates and teammate to Jeff Shutt. Always lets us know what fuel mileage is looking like on the night. And, of course, here tonight as you see him work his way around. In fact, we'll see if we can go to a little bit better view of it right here. And yeah, nope, doesn't look like we're going to get one, but I was going to say, as you see him roll around, carrying a bit of a new sponsor on the side of the car here tonight. Something a little different than what we're used to seeing with just purely the Capital Auto Group paint scheme. And that is for his new paint company called Imagine Digital Designs. And the motto, if you can imagine it, he can design it. So again, if you're interested in any sort of paint service, I'm assuming... Not sure if it's, assume it's for iRacing potentially, but if it's not even real life, whatever the deal is, make sure you check it out. If you need any more info on it, let us know and we can get it to you. But Johnny McCallchuck, another one of the veterans of the series. We've seen around two seasons and going to see him with a strong run here tonight. But, but you talk about strong. How about Austin Fitzgerald so far through this race? I mean, his biggest contest, of course, was going to be Andrew Mraz, at least from what we've seen so far, 66 laps through. But now that the 97 wrecked and you know honestly I, I don't know if we're going to see him back up here he took a lot of damage he's back in 20th looks like the car is a lot better than it was but man that's still a long ways back to come up from but he does have just about 130 a little bit more than that laps to do it so certainly still a viable option here we go green flag back in the air 67 laps complete at richmond Looks like a pretty good restart this time. Everybody with no issues, no checkups, no tire spin. Down into turn number one, though. Scott Glasso going to try to contest. Not going to be able to make it stick off of turn number two. Austin Fitzgerald able to get clear by about a car length, half a car length now. As you saw the four try to close that gap into turn number three. Adam Johnson, one of the rookies, decided to stay out. Now, you do see 
A little bit of damage on the front there. Almost looks like, I know we say a but as he, almost as if he hit a life pole, if you will. As you see, that nose is concaved in. But he's staying out, and I mean, so far, I know we've only ran about a lap and a half here under green, but doesn't seem like it's affecting him too bad. Again, the highest speeds these guys get up to is about 150, so you don't need a ton of arrow, but it can certainly affect you if you get too much damage. The double zero there of Quentin Clark. Similar looking damage as well as Jeff Marble continues to try to work around the inside of these two. Right now, Jeff has his hands full. He knows he needs this position, but doesn't want to have to keep sticking side by side for too long as doesn't want to burn up his tires. In fact, you saw right there, it looks like he may be considering giving way to the rookie here, letting him have it for now, and then kind of playing the you go now, I'll get you later. But now that he gets another run back down into turn number one, looks like he's going to think twice about it. Adam Johnson still rolling pretty strong on the outside. That'll fade here in a matter of laps. I mean, if Jeff Marble is able to stay side by side, I can tell you now that Adam Johnson, realistically, he's only going to be able to go so long as, oh, man. Marble caught right alongside the door there of Adam Johnson. And you thought that was maybe going to be another caution of the night with as close as those two got there. From that view, Bill Benedict shoots off track for a moment. Yeah, that might be him coming back out from the pits. Yeah, sure enough it is. Mark Sabak as well. Benedict actually looks like he's going to bring it back down to the pits yet again. And so the 90, the struggles on the day continue. That is... Good looking paint scheme as always for Bill Benedict, one of the Triad Racing Enterprise drivers. Teammates with Jeffrey Souza and a couple of others. But here's a look at the track map and something that we haven't had a chance to really see in action yet, which has been lap traffic. And now it's certainly going to be a factor if we have a run over, I would say, any probably more than 40 to 50 laps. As right now you can see the entirety of the field already separated by just about half a track length. And so for the leader, Austin Fitzgerald, this is really important right now that. He gets out to as big of a lead as he can while maintaining those tires because eventually, again, if this thing goes green long enough, you have to start worrying about lap traffic and that's when sometimes you can get caught off guard or if you're Scott Glasso, potentially pounce on an opportunity and use one of those lap cars as a pick. So Austin Fitzgerald still only leading here by about two tenths of a second over Scott Glasso. Ty Iopolito battling with the 48 of Tyler Marble here, the 19 on the inside, the 34 just in front. The 48 of Tyler Marble on the outside trying to squeeze in that gap on the outside. Looks like he's not quite going to be able to do it, but he's going to dive down into three with the hope to make it stick. Or excuse me, turn number one. Kyle Oakley, Andrew Moraz side by side. I'm amazed though right here at the positions that Andrew Moraz has already made back up. I talked about he was back in 20th. Wasn't sure if he'd be able to make this positioning back up, but I think what he did is decided, you know, just to take this set of tires and try to rip them as long as you can burn those tires up but get as much track position as you can and hope for another caution going with everybody else be back on the same strategy maybe come up with just potentially one tire set left it's certainly not a bad strategy especially for somebody in kind of the position that he's in right now definitely doesn't really leave him with a ton of options as he had to believe go in and get that damage repaired and then brought it back out and right now things looking pretty good but I mean I'm sitting here looking what we have for guys that pit at least under that last caution, which we of course saw with Tyler Marble and multiple others. The caution just before that, Angel Moraz went in and did fix damage. So, again, very interesting. A lot of strategies that are going to be played if this race goes green long enough for us to make it to that first green flag stop. The earliest stops that we're expecting are probably somewhere about 60 laps or so from when we went green, maybe a little bit more, 65. But you can make it all the way, at least safely, on tires and fuel to about 100 laps out. And so, you know, at the least, one more pit stop, depending on when you pit. In fact, I think, actually, I think no matter what strategy you're on, this thing's going to be a one-stopper from here. I mean, you know, we went back green with about 160. You figure you stretch that, you get to about 120 if you were going 60. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a one-stopper from here because I think that first stop's going to actually come right about lap 130, maybe just a little bit sooner or a little bit later. And then from there, of course, that'll be 60 laps all the way. Well, actually, it'll be 70 laps all the way to the finish. But I think guys will stretch one of these two stops, that 70 laps, and then do the other one 60. It's just more of a question of kind of how do they split that up and which stop do they short pit and which stop do they run a little bit longer. Things starting to single file out here more and more as continue to tick off laps, approaching the halfway mark here in just about 20 laps. We did see a battle here between a couple of guys it looks like they're able to get it sorted out pretty quickly. Further back, though, Nick Situ, multiple laps 
down earlier. Excuse me. I thought he went multiple laps down earlier. I believe. Not sure if he lost one due to the internet connection, but we did see him involved in a multiple of the incidents earlier is what I meant to say. But since then, has recovered really, honestly, nicely. I mean, he's got a top 25 run going. Down 14 from where he started. So where he's running right now certainly didn't tell the tale of the day in terms of what speed that 13 brought to the track here tonight. And then there's Cody Matthews, who on the opposite end of the spectrum currently is running multiple laps down after he was involved in a couple incidents earlier tonight as well. Right spot, part of this side-by-side -side battle. Get ready to potentially be three wide here. So they're going to have to work around the lapper here of Cody Matthews. Brett Spot and 35 teammates with Ryan Haynes. These two have had a decent start to the season and pretty good runs up to this point, but still looking for that first top three. Brett Spot, that is, or potentially that first win this season. See if things pan out. Good looking paint scheme with the Bushnell Motorsports part number 35, Chevy Camaro for Brett Spot. And then all the way towards the back here, even further back to where we currently sit now in that 25th position. Ryan Conkley saw the bumper damage. There's Kenneth Bartholomew looking to see what positions he can scrap out and what points he can hold on to here for the night. And here we go. Austin Fitzgerald, who still leads the way, has now got that gap up to about three, almost four tenths of a second now over Scott Glasso, who really isn't going away here. I mean, the four, you got to wonder if he's burning up more tire than he would like. But if he's not, I mean, he's doing a fantastic job of hanging with your leader and going to have a chance to pounce here as the run goes on or potentially try to beat him in the pit cycles. And I know we talked about the weather earlier, sim time, and a couple of the other things, but you can see now that it is just about 8 o'clock here, sim time, and that's why it's gotten darker outside in the sim. The lights have gotten brighter. Track temp has not cooled down, but in fact, it's actually increased a little bit. Now sitting at about 75, so still cool, still a lot of grip, but Certainly is probably changing the way these cars are handling at least a little bit. Now, new tires, I got to believe that everything feels relatively the same. The track, again, very grippy here tonight. We knew that from the start of this race when the track temp started out at 68. Since then, has just continued to warm up. Adam Johnson holding on to that podium position. What a run this would be if strategy can pan out. The rookie can get his first top three here of the season tonight. It is one of the independent drivers. And, you know, when you come into your first season as a rookie, there's already a lot of pressure. It's already stressful. And then on top of that, to not really have a team to lean on, it's a tough task for Adam Johnson, but he seems up to the challenge. And so far, so good here tonight. Again, looking for his season best finish, which is where he currently runs right now in that third position. He is under fire, though, from one of the veterans, the captain, Jeff Marble. And speaking of veterans, Jeff said last week, I mean, it was about time that one of the veterans were able to bring one home finally versus all the rookies. I mean, it had been just about rookie dominance from the gate all the way to where we were until, of course, Wester Jr. put an end to that last week. And my point with all that is that the rookies, they came to play this season. And a lot of guys that maybe were doing kind of the same old thing, it may not work anymore. you got to change it up. We've been seeing that kind of evolve the last couple weeks. It's been certainly improving the runs for a lot of the field. And, I mean, it looks your top three, Austin Fitzgerald, Scott Glasso, Jeff Marble. Three guys with multiple years in the series for your first and second running rookie right now, Adam Johnson and Quentin Clark. Adam Pajari back in sixth, Taio Polito in seventh. Michael Mueller in eighth with Tyler Marble in ninth. And Jeffrey Souza is up 28 positions from where he started this race at. And he currently rounds out your top 10. We're going to take our first break tonight, but we will go side by side. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Richmond.
Welcome back to Richmond, Virginia, at least here in the sim. Glad that everybody's enjoying their Monday night here watching the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series Richmond Spring 200 on Ghost Racing Network. Nothing really changed while we were on break except the fact that Austin Fitzgerald continues to extend his lead over second place Scott Glasso, who's also looking for a season best finish tonight with where he runs at the moment. Jeff Marble has now moved up into that final podium spot with Adam Johnson back to fourth and Quentin Clark rounding out your top five for the moment. Now the 34 of Alan Pajara, he's up eight positions from where he started this race at tonight. See right now as it stands, he is in six tight Eo Polito back in seven tight Marvel eight. 97. Andrew Mraz gets into Souza, blows the corner, and now the 97 with an absolutely wicked save off at turn number four. How did he hold on to that race car? Oh my goodness, he got all the way down below the apron to save it. I thought for sure he had spun around. He just all this was is just he got into the corner a little bit too hot, I think. Try to make the move on Souza, and he's going to try to dive. Yeah, he just got way too late into the braking zone there, trying to make that move. I mean, you saw he had the wheel just about full lock to the left, trying anything to get it to turn, and just wouldn't do it. And as Souza is trying to make his corner as well, the 97 gets into him. Luckily, Souza, though, doesn't get spun around or anything from it, and Raz with a four-wheel slide as he holds on. It would emerge back up without any further issue. Does lose. Looks like three to four positions as there's Andrew Russo going by along with the three of Jared Bundy, but should be able to pick those spots back up. Maybe. I mean, you know, now that I think about it, the biggest concern, and in fact, looks like this concern may be holding some val excuse me, validity, is the fact that the 97, he may have scrubbed a lot of tire off right there with that slide. Maybe a couple flat spots. Not sure what the case would be, but the 39 here now on his bumper. He's losing more positions here and a lot of time all of a sudden after going the positive direction, so... You gotta wonder here if this is a case where Andrew Raz might have to bail out of his original strategy is hey, you see Ryan Haynes giving him a little bit of the chrome horn saying, hey man, I'm here and I think I'm a little bit faster. Appreciate it if you let me by. Back up front though, Scott Glass now almost two seconds behind Austin Fitzgerald. And we are now within that pit window. I don't think we'll see anybody pit necessarily just yet. You may have a couple of guys try some strategy though. Looks like Brett Spot in the 35. Currently, he is down pit road. That's not strategy. That is an issue that happened to the 35. Not sure exactly what it was, but you do see some right front, maybe even a little bit of front bumper damage for that 35 car. So that might be a big part of the reason that he is currently riding where he is. And now we did have an incident. I believe this might have been during break with Ryan Shiro getting down into turn number one. Looks like he might tangle with the 42 of Roger Shelton. Nope. Doesn't look like he just as they get off the turn. Well... Take that back. Looks like he certainly does there, and it's when they get off the turn that that incident occurs, and but the 20 goes for a slide. Very lucky. Oh, well, I spoke too soon again. I was going to say lucky. It looked like he wasn't going to hit the wall initially, but the car just kept sliding until eventually it met up with the concrete there that aligns the inside, and yeah, that's just Roger Shelton. He's got to run here. The 20, I'm not sure if he was really getting loose here. Ryan Shiro, go to the onboard view. Take a listen. No, I don't. It doesn't sound to me like he was really getting loose at all. I think that Roger Shelton just had a run and fortunately misjudges it here a little bit. And as a result, he gets in to the 20 of Ryan Shiro. Since Shiro Ran locks it down, trying to stop. And actually, no, he would have stopped, but he lets it roll. And that's when it rolls into that inside wall. So that was that incident. And just now we had another incident here with Bill Benedict. Is this maybe a similar setup right here? Coming off of turn number four. Ooh. No, that actually... Oh, yikes. Oh, my goodness. Wow. A lot of contact in this one. Lucky that this did not bring out the caution. I say lucky. At least lucky for your leaders. And this one involved... Look like... Angel Mraz. A 97 here and a couple others. Boy, Mraz's night went from good to bad to worse. All starting with that cell spin he had earlier. And this all starts for him. Coming off of turn number two. Remember, we talked about those tires getting even more worn out, but I think he's just trying to hold it down there, keep it off the 42, gets loose, tries to correct. As caution is out, back live for Troy Baker. We'll go to that in just a minute. Looks like it's a one-car incident for now. But then as the 97 gets back going here, there's a checkup as the 77 of Greg Bartlett had some trouble of his own. And I think that's what's going to kind of lead to all the contact that we saw here and what ultimately led to Bill Benedict getting spun around. And all that checking up as everybody tries to miss him, in fact. 
think that was maybe the six of Tachiro. It's into the side here, the rear of the 77, pretty hard. As it's just a big checkup, trying to check up, just a little bit too late. That's what sends the 90 to the inside where he gets finished off, of course, by Greg Bartlett. So as the caution's back out up front, boy, is this going to change up some strategy now. Everybody going to pit, and everybody should be expected to make it to the rest of the way, at least in terms of fuel. But it is going to still be a long run of a lot of tire saving if you're going to make it all the way to the end here, at least without pitting. Now, if you get a caution, that, of course, should change, or of course could change some things up. But as it stands right now, everybody... At least all your leaders bringing it down to the pits and shouldn't come as any surprise. Austin Fitzgerald, Scott Glasso, Adam Johnson, Jeff Marble, Alan Pajari, Tyler Marble, Quentin Clark, Ty Eo Polito, Thomas O'Hara, Jared Bundy. I mean, I'm looking here and it goes just about all the way back to 21st with Todd Shiro of guys that brought it down to the pits here to take four tires filled up with fuel. See how this thing cycles out as right now it is showing Ryan Shiro being scored as your leader, but it's Fitzgerald is going to win the race out of pit road. Followed by Scott Glasso, Tyler Marble, third Jeffrey Souza in fourth. Drag race back for seventh and ninth as well as it looks like the 99 of Mueller is going to have to give that position to the 24. And Jerusso, multiple others now working their way out of the pits here as well. And so it's 114 laps as now you see Ryan Shear bringing it down. So he will surrender that lead back over to Austin Fitzgerald who is probably feeling pretty comfortable and hoping this thing was going to continue to go green. But... Fortunately, now he's going to have another restart on his hands. Fortunate, unfortunate for him, fortunate for us here watching, of course, on the broadcast because that's going to keep things exciting as Scott Glasso had really good short to medium run speed there and was able to stick with Fitzgerald for quite some time but couldn't complete the pass. And then by the time they got to the long run, that car fell off a cliff. So we'll see if it's more of the same this time or if maybe he made some minor adjustments under the pits that's going to potentially help him out right here. All right, just before we go back green here, let's go back and see what did bring out this caution. This was Troy Baker, one of the rookies in the 18 here. There's a 77 on the apron, getting back up to speed, and Jeff Marble has got a big run, and you, ouch. Thought it was a one-car incident. That makes it two as Jeff Marble there gets into the 18. Couldn't tell if, I think Jeff just kind of gets up into him here. See the 18 up top, well... I'll tell you what I think it is. I mean, yeah, Jeff definitely gets into him here. Watch Troy Baker. He gets up, gets the right sides on that seam, and then doesn't go up any further. Got to wonder if the 18 was maybe getting a little bit loose because at this point, of course, Jeff Marble's expecting that Troy Baker is working his way up the racetrack, but doesn't, and Mar Jeff Marble gets into him and got into him with the right rear to the left front of Troy Baker. That sends a 15 pretty hard into that outside wall. And then the 18 with pretty significant damage as well. All right, so we get ready to go back to green flag racing as we did not get the one to go signal that time. We'll see if we're able to get it this time here. And the more caution laps we run, the more solid of a strategy that becomes of guys being able to make it from here without even having to consider another stop. But again, the big key factor in this, this strategy that's almost kind of forcing these guys now to have to go the rest of the way since they're good on fuel is tire management. If you burn these tires off and we go green the rest of the way, it's not going to end too well. I mean, you're going to be struggling in the long run, as we saw with a couple guys. Andrew Mraz, Scott Glasso towards the end of that long run. I know he maintained second, but it was just that fall off, whereas Austin Fitzgerald, who had the clean air, maintained the lead, and all while doing in the early run, or excuse me, all while maintaining tire in the early run, certainly gave him a lot of benefits there as we got into the late run. And now, here we go. It's going to be 83 laps to go at Richmond. Green flag back in the air. Good start for Austin Fitzgerald. Tyler Marble in tow. Scott Glass on the outside. Not going to be able to hold on to second this time around. You see the four trying to roll the outside. Looks like he actually does draw back even here with the 48. But Tyler Marble looking to get clear down into turn number three. Still no dice yet for the 48. Further back. Two by two. Little three wide action. Looks like Tracy Powers cutting up the middle. Off of turn number four, excuse me, that was actually the 77 of Greg Bartlett. The other bright orange neon car. And Scott Glasso, Tyler Marble, as they continue to battle. Fitzgerald loves what he has seen because this allows him to try to stretch that gap earlier and not have to worry about pressing as hard. Scott Glasso on the opposite end of the spectrum. He needs to push really hard here early to get that spot, and he does just that. Tyler Marble finally has to give it up. But you wonder, a couple laps there that he was running on the outside as hard as he had to. 
How much tire life did that take away for the four? As, ooh, out back, trouble into the outside wall goes Pajari. Tracy Powers spins around out back. And now the 34 gets tagged by Todd Shiro. More involved. Brian Conklin, Johnny McCulchuk. Everybody checks up on the apron and the track is the 34 Pajari is destroyed. See the suspension even broke it on that car. He is going to be able to roll back to the pits, but that's about it. This car is done for the night, at least in terms of any competitive shot. All right, well, here we go. It all starts with 34 just getting out of shape. And boy, he was drifting for a while. I mean, Pajari gets pretty much out of shape here as soon as he enters turn number one. And it's just going to get worse the whole way through here. Never really able to save it. So here we go. A little bit late on the brakes. There's the downshift and car just starts sliding out and I think he's maybe carrying just a little bit too much speed. The front can handle it, but the back sure can. And as it continues to come around, Jeffrey Souza arrived on scene with a run and not quite able to check up in time for that 34 on the inside. And as a result, well, the 96 was trying, but just couldn't quite guess right which way the 34 was going to go. I'm thinking he maybe tried to speed back up when the 34 started to slide right here. Maybe thought he could shoot low. Unfortunately, just couldn't quite and tags him in the left front and then that sends Alan Pajari hard up into the outside safer barrier. That's not the biggest hit he's going to take though right here. Jared Bundy rushed on the scene somehow misses it. Ryan Haynes though going to make some pretty significant contact as there's Quentin Clark and Adam Johnson going around. Ryan Shiro tags him again and then Johnny McCulchuk he goes for a slide misses it and as a result Todd Shiro never saw it coming and man that's a hard hard hit for Shiro and then there's Brian Conklin piling in. There was certainly a lot of nowhere to go in this one. Let's go on board first with Todd Shiro here. We talked about maybe didn't see it. I mean, let's look for the caution lights here. Mrs. Tracy Powers. Caution lights are on there. And yeah, I mean, just, I mean, there's just not enough time to check up there. You hear him get on the brakes, let off the gas. And he was trying, just ran out of real estate to do so. On the flip end of that, we saw Jared Bundy and how he somehow snuck through this. Let's get an onboard view with him. Man, that's so close. And then he does, unfortunately, get a little contact right there. And, oh, gets tagged by Andrew Russo. So he missed the first one, but didn't quite miss the second one. As everybody was trying to get back rolling. There was a couple more hits, and everybody missed that first wreck. But then this was kind of the second wreck here that collected a couple more of them. So that one all in all is going to go down as about a five-car incident in total. Give you one more view here from the static cam. So there's the contact to the outside safer barrier for Alan Pajari as he's spinning around. And then here's the onrushing Todd Shiro, which is nowhere to go. And then Jared Bundy, Andrew Russo with the contact between themselves. Roger Shelton just brings it to a halt. Wants no part of it. So now it's 124, going to be 125 laps complete when we cross the stripe. Again, just further aiding that strategy, making it easier, making it less of a long run, less tire you'll have to save, but still not at that point where you can ignore the tires just yet, of course, because it's going to be, looks like about 74, 73 laps or so to go. We'll get the green flag, depending on if we get the one to go right here. So still going to have to save these tires for probably, again, this is assuming it goes green till we get to probably at least about lap 170. And then if you're trying to track down somebody, maybe start to push the issue a little more. Honestly, I take that back. I'm going to say to lap 180. I mean, the fall off that you get here, Richmond, is just absolutely ridiculous. So if you're not careful and you start pushing it too early, you might have some speed for a couple laps. But, you know, similar to what we saw in the Cup Series race in real life at both, of course, Richmond and Bristol, where you can run a lot faster than the rest of the field if you run it hard. But you burn off tires so quick that the trade off just absolutely kills you in the back end of the run. So up front, Fitzgerald Glass will line up row number one. Now the Marble Jeffrey Souza row number two. And this time, Cam Scott Glasso get a better restart. Green flag back in the air. The four car with a phenomenal restart as he's going to be able to hang even with Austin Fitzgerald all the way down to turn number one. Fitzgerald, though, able to drive it in, drive it deep, and gets clear before they exit turn number two. And so that was kind of a big deal right there for Scott Glasso as well because this time, again, not having to worry about fighting with either the 74 or the 48 on the outside for too long. He's able to get tucked in line. And now we'll see if he sets himself up to just kind of ride in the tire tracks. Tire treads, if you will, of the 74 for a little while, or if he tries to maybe set up and make that pass here a little bit sooner than later. Further back, two by two, Thomas O'Hara 
Andrew Russo on the outside of Ryan Shiro and Quentin Clark on the inside. Adam Johnson trying to get back up in this fight as well. There's Roger Shelton with a couple of others. Two by two, Tracy Powers and Johnny McCulchuk. Johnny McCulchuk in 18th. Good recovery again after being involved in a couple incidents tonight. We've seen him running a little bit higher than that position that he's currently in at the moment, but not a bad spot to be as there's Jared Bundy getting back out on track. Remember, he was involved in that last incident. Sustained some damage from that. Take an onboard view there. Johnny McCulchuk certainly seeing him have to work the wheel a lot more tonight than what we're used to seeing. That uh, helps kind of further show the trouble that a lot of these guys have been struggling with tonight and the way these cars handle. Jeff Marble. Well, boy, it's been a roller coaster of a night, but after being involved in that last incident with one of the rookies, Troy Baker, I think he may have done some terminal damage to that car because he has really not been able to do much more than just barely break inside the top 20 tonight after showing potentially top three speed at the start of this race. Battle of attrition and definitely has not gone the way of the 15 here tonight. The 73 of Kenneth Bartholomew, another one of the rookies, has, was able to show a lot of speed during speed weeks. Since then, I haven't seen quite the same speed out of the 73, but nonetheless, he's had a decent run, could decent, excuse me, decent handful of runs, and that consistency has kept him up in the rookie standings for points, top 10. But he's certainly looking for another breakout performance. Talladega coming up in a couple weeks. Circle your calendar, keep an eye for the 73 to potentially be fast and have a shot there. And Kyle Oakley, another driver who we saw. I mean, I keep going down a list here, and I think everybody that I've mentioned has been in at least one incident tonight, maybe with the exclusion of Austin Fitzgerald and potentially Scott Glasso. But a lot of them have had good recoveries. Kyle Oakley in 21st, that was where he qualified and where he currently sits at the moment. Jeff Shutt for No Excuses Racing. Teammate, of course, to Johnny McCallchuck. Falling back and actually not on the lead lap anymore, back in 33rd, as he is currently 11 laps down. So just out here running, trying to get pretty much any points that he can get right now. Now, interestingly enough here, I'm not sure he left our driver cam actually. It appears he has frozen up, and that would explain him. Like, doesn't look to me like he's even using the steering wheel. We appreciate Jeff hopping on with us here tonight and a couple others to make sure we make a stop out here before we go back to the battle up front. Ryan Haynes for BMP Racing. Right now, he sits in that seventh position. Looking to see if he can maybe find a way to break into the top three here tonight. Already a great run. I mean, if you can come to Richmond and bring home a top 10, it's got to feel like a win. Unless, of course, you've got a car as fast as what we've seen from Austin Fitzgerald tonight. And it may be a little bit of a different story, but certainly nothing to scoff at right now if you're Ryan Haynes. Same deal if you're Quentin Clark, who's had a good run here tonight after being involved in a couple incidents, including a couple with his teammates here tonight. Andrew Moraz in the most recent incident that he was involved in collected Quentin Clark. Quentin again got the win at Phoenix, looking to add on to that total here tonight with potentially his second win of the season. And then last but certainly not least, Ryan Shiro after what's been a troublesome night for his teammate Todd Shiro. He's kind of carried the torch for Shiro Motorsports, if you will, tonight. Doing a phenomenal job. We'll see if he can hold on the rest of the way and maybe even bring home a top 10 if he can pick up another spot or two before this thing's all said and done. Back up front we go. Austin Fitzgerald still being scored as your leader. Tyler Marble, though, has now moved to second. Interestingly enough, just about a lap or so ago before we were getting ready to go back to the front, the gap was between Scott Glasso and Austin Fitzgerald. It was down to only two-tenths of a second. So not sure what happened here, if it was a slip-up by Glasso or what the deal was, but now that Tyler Marble has taken that second position, you wonder what does the 48 have to offer? This is kind of that spot that he got to start the race in. Rolled off on the outside pole and... Now it becomes, again, a matter of how consistent can you run and can you run just a little bit faster each lap. Now, I should note that getting there and passing him are going to be two completely different things, but, of course, got to get there first to have a chance at passing him. So see what Tyler Marble can do here over the course of the next 10 to 15 laps. It's going to be 140 laps complete this time as we cross the stripe. That means exactly 61 laps to go here in the Richmond Spring 200. Normally, this would be the time that we would potentially be expecting Kind of that final pit stop, but with a strategy that's been in play tonight with all the cautions, we are, again, not expecting another pit stop from this point. We're going to see this thing go green the rest of the way and see who has got the best long-run car here tonight for what could be the longest run of the race. We're not quite at the longest run. We've already had one that was longer than this, but 
certainly could be approaching that margin if these guys can keep it clean, keep it collected here. Forget about the next 60 laps. All right, well, as Tyler Marvel starts to fade now just a little bit, that's going to put Scott Glasso back on his bumper here in just about a lap or two. And you got to wonder here, is Glasso maybe trying a different approach from what he did last time when all of a sudden he fell off at the end of the run and maybe saving a little tire right here, letting Tyler Marble go by and seeing if he's got something for these guys towards the end of the run. Now, the biggest thing, which we've seen a lot tonight, is you got to make sure that you get your car pointed. You know, if it's a late run, you could try to get on the throttle early and just see how much speed you can carry out of the corner. But when you're set up to potentially go on a long run, you do not want to hit that throttle until the car is pointed straight, and you want to make sure you put it down nice and slow until you know that those rear tires have gripped, the car is stanced and set, you can get going straight because every time that you slide on the exit of the corner, you start to really burn those rear tires off and you see it there down to just about 100 miles an hour at the slowest through the corner. So these guys scrubbing off quite a bit of speed by turning the wheel, using the brakes, and of course scrubbing off tire in the process. So we're gonna have to see how this thing pans out as this race finishes up. But I mean, all in all the pace, it has definitely fallen off. I mean, there's no question of that. Austin Fitzgerald right now. Compare him and Tyler Marble Fitzgerald currently running 22 ones versus a 22 two, at least on the last lap for Tyler Marble. And that pace, as you can see over the course of just the last five laps, has fallen off just about a tenth or so. So not too bad. Not like we've seen at some of the other tracks we've been to. But certainly something you keep an eye on as a driver. And I'm telling you, I think these last probably 15 to 20 laps. When we get there, it's going to be a really big struggle for a lot of these guys. An eye-opener, if you will. I think you're going to see a lot of guys have to make some adjustments while on track, if you will, in terms of trying to change their lineup, change their driving style up a little bit. It's going to be a grind all the way to the finish. And Austin Fitzgerald, he is all here for it. Him and Jeff Marble, two of the guys that probably like long runs the best of anybody in the series. That's because they both know how to build long run setups. They're on teams that are known for long run setups. Again, Tyler Marble and Austin Fitzgerald, the duel for the first win. Scott Glasso, Jeff, Jeffrey Souza, who, by the way, is up to fourth now. And this is incredible. He is up. He's almost went the entire length of the field here. To the front, he's up in total 34 positions from where he started this race at. And, uh oh Well, I may have spoke too soon. Though. That was somebody else who had a look at there that had a blinking issue for just a moment. But Jeffrey Souza, for now, continues to put together a fantastic run here tonight. This time as they come around, they're going to be taking lap 149. And so that will put us with 52 laps to go here at Richmond. And so with that, we're going to take another side-by-side -side break. We will be right back. Stick with us where Austin Fitzgerald leads at Richmond.
Welcome back to Richmond Raceway where Austin Fitzgerald looking to capture his first win of the season here tonight at the three quarters of a mile short track. These host to some great racing that we've honestly had here tonight. But now again, starting to get into that medium to long range part of the run and things have gotten pretty stringed out, especially between your leader and second place, Tyler Marble. Fitzgerald has stretched that gap all the way now to over two seconds. And the only thing in his way now would either be, of course, a caution or potentially lap traffic, which he will be arriving on scene for here pretty soon. In fact, he's already lapped a couple. Still got a lot more here in the windshield. And you see now that they're single file. That's not the issue. When they're single file, it's usually not too big of an issue. Most guys are pretty respectful to just let the leader buy now. They do have the right. Oh, man, big moment right there for Fitzgerald. You saw he had a bail out of the throttle. But I was getting ready to say, most of the single file guys, they're not really an issue. You know, of course, some of them that are still fighting for the lead lap, they've got a right to battle in. Fitzgerald will have to attend with that. But for the most part, nobody gives them too many issues. It's when they get side-by-side -side battling for position as lappers that starts to become a bit of a problem. And that two-second gap, it can diminish in a hurry if you catch the wrong traffic at the wrong part of the racetrack. Jeffrey Souza up to third as Scott Glasso has fallen all the way to fifth. Brandon Saylor, the rookie on Team Marble iRacing, has moved up to fifth, or excuse me, fourth. And so Souza definitely got to be the most impressive here tonight, at least at this point. I mean, that car on the long run is absolutely incredible. And you got to wonder if there was maybe a little bit of tire strategy as well here in the play for Souza and how that potentially affected some things. I mean, remember when we had that last caution, there were guys that had the option to pit, and we saw, of course, guys that had damage or the night wasn't going their way pit, but I was going to see here. I didn't think that we saw Jeffrey Souza bring it down to the pits in. No, he did not, so he should be on the same tire strategy as everybody else, and I believe that's just the speed that that 96 car currently has at the moment. As they fall three seconds now behind your leader, he's looking to see if he can pick up potentially another spot right here from the 48. They work by the nine of Mark Sabak. It's Gerald getting around the lapper of Danny Gutierrez. And while these guys continue battle out, notice the scoring tower there. Started with 39 cars. We've already had over a handful have to retire, but as each lap goes by, what we are seeing is more and more of them go a lap down. That's what Fitzgerald wants to do. That way, if we do get a late caution, it's the less guys that he has to battle with and the less the better in case of if he's looking for that first win of the season again here tonight. Well, we haven't talked about points or the upcoming schedule too much just yet. So while we have a chance, let's over to there, head over to there and see what we're looking at. All right, so coming into the race tonight, Michael Mueller after getting his second win not last week, but the week before, being scored as your leader in points here on the season so far. Jake Hickson, the rookie for Dynamic Autosports, in second. There's Austin Fitzgerald in third. Could make a pretty big jump tonight, though, again, if he can secure the win. Tyler Marble back in fourth. Jeff Marble fifth. Kyle Oakley in sixth with Quentin Clark in seventh. Danny Gutierrez eighth. Ryan Sherrill ninth. And Kenneth Bartholomew, the rookie, still hanging on to tenth in points. Looking at the upcoming schedule, next week we head to Martinsville. The paper clip, and I think that there's a pretty good chance that a lot of the field is dreading that one, and a lot of them are certainly excited for it, but that one has a tendency to sometimes get crazy. It's probably the most difficult track on the entire schedule, so certainly going to see a lot of practice. It's going to be a tough one, but going to be interesting to see who can get the job done. 200 laps, same distance as what we saw here tonight. So make sure you tune in next week for that one. After that, Texas, followed by Talladega, which is going to be another good one, followed by Dover. This caution is out, by the way, on track. Go into that, and by the way, that's going to shake a ton of things up. Believe me, I'm not trying to push it to the leeway here. Just finishing the schedule before we'll actually see what happened. Not sure exactly what did happen, but nonetheless, talked about going to have Dover to round out April, and then open up May as Kansas, followed by Darlington. North Wilkesboro will lay host to the All-Star Race. Then we go to Charlotte for the longest race of the season, Gateway and Sonoma on July 10th. Well, as we go back live, talked about it, cautions out. Boy, that is not what Austin Fitzgerald wanted to see. It seems like almost what we saw in the real-life cup race where it's just almost everything going against trying to let Fitzgerald have a shot of winning this thing with the caution that we got here that's now going to set us up for not quite a late restart, but certainly, you know, a later restart in terms of the race. So we'll see how that sets things up. But looking for the caution here, and I don't see anything just yet. We'll go through the field here and... Look at this play-by-play. -play. I'm sure it happened somewhere. The question is just, where was that somewhere at? So, start from the front of the field here and working back. Ooh, there it is. Souza and Tyler Marble 
Thought it was towards the back of the pack. It wasn't. It was right at the front. Jeffrey Souza did save it for the most part, but oh man, he lost all his track position. He was doing such a good job. We'll see if he's able to gain any of it back there on the pit sequence, but man, he was doing such a great job working his way through the field here and goes for the pass on Tyler Marble down into three and four. And Tyler definitely puts it on his door here, getting into the corner. But at the same time, Souza, I think, was thinking that he was going to be able to dive it in far enough to get past the 48. Doesn't work out. There may have been a little contact there, but everything's fine. It's when they get off the corner here that, again, maybe the 96. I'm not sure does he just. I'm not sure if he gets loose here or if he's expecting the 48 to go up a little bit sooner off the corner. Yeah, I think he's just expecting the 48. I mean, you see, there's a chance he's getting loose, though. He does catch the wheel. Watch this. You see it snap left and then back right and then back. It's just, and then at that point, I mean, they get stuck together. Tyler Marble does a great job hanging on, but fortunately for Souza, he goes around and he does get tagged. Looks like by Brandon Saylor, who is in fourth. That'll give some damage to his number 24 Chevy Camaro. Give you a couple different angles of this. All the way from where this thing really started here. There's the first contact. No harm, no foul there. This is the one that really does it is... Tyler maybe trying to save it as well right there. And man, oh man. All of a sudden, we've got a race on our hands. What looked like it was going to be a kind of a blowout, if you will, for Austin Fitzgerald towards the end. Now, it has certainly changed in a pretty big regard. And a lot of bumping and banging there. I don't think anybody's going to be too upset about it. I mean, I think Souza knows that maybe he made a little bit of a mistake and Tyler, just a little bit of a door rub there. I don't think it's going to do any damage to his car, so should be okay there. But, man, like I said, that is going to change up the strategy big time for the front of the field. Let's go back live and check it out. Austin Fitzgerald still being scored as your leader. As we've got a couple guys trying to get a lap back. Tyler Marble in second. Brandon Saylor in third. Andrew Raz in fourth with Ty Io Polito rounding out your top five. Scott Glasso six. Ryan Haynes in seventh. Quentin Clark in 8th, Adam Johnson in ninth, and Ryan Shiro rounding out your top 10. All right, so when we go back green here, looks like it's going to be just a little bit more than 25 laps to go. And I took it back. I said that, you know, it wasn't quite a short sprint to the finish. That's a pretty short sprint here around a track like Richmond. Certainly not a long ways to go by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to go by in a hurry. These guys run a 20-second lap, so it's going to be... Definitely a lot of bumping and banging now. I have a feeling all the way to the finish, but so far it's felt like Austin Fitzgerald's race to win. Let's see if Tyler Mobile has anything for him. Exodus Gaming Studio in the chat with the $2 Super Chat. It says, let's go Shelton 42. That's right, Roger Shelton looking for a good run tonight. Currently in 11th, looking to break into the top 10. Flag, we'll see if he can do it. Green flag back in the air. 23 laps, or excuse me, 27 laps to go here at Richmond. Off into turn number one. Tyler Marble trying to hold it as close as he can to Austin Fitzgerald. They're going to drag race down the back straightaway as Brandon R. Saylor gets out of shape. He's three wide into three. Looks like the 24 is going to have to bail onto the apron. Not sure what the issue is there, but here we go. Tyler Marble, no more tire saving. And all of a sudden, that outside line has come alive. The 48 trying to make it work down into turn number one. Track temp has cooled off a little bit more as it's now 8.30 sim time, 72 degrees. The inside should roll a little bit better as a couple of laps go by. The 97 of Andrew Morass. I mean, where did he come from? Oh, he's going to go around just as we mentioned him trying to save it. Goes for a half spin. Now he does almost spin. Does he end up holding on to it? I think he does. Gets back going. Man, I was just getting ready to say after what was a good night that had gone bad and then went worse. Somehow he makes the comeback, and now he's back to stage number one. Moraz has not been able to catch a break here tonight. As we hit 25 laps to go up front, through all that chaos, Austin Fitzgerald was able to take the lead back from Tyler Marble. And now he's looking to do what he's been doing all night, and that is to start to stretch that gap and hopefully stretch it all the way through these next 25 laps. And these two have already created a significant gap from third place, Scott Glasso. In fact, over a second, they see Jeffrey Souza. By the way, Souza, that is not for position. In fact, he's just fighting to see if he can go potentially get a lap back here before this thing's all said and done. 
Got a lot of work to do. He might be in a lucky dog spot, though, if we were to get another caution. By the way, again, Exodus Gaming Studio, we do appreciate the $2 super chat. Thank you very much. Glad to see you tuning in here tonight. Glad that you're enjoying. Said, let's go, Shelton. By the way, since I restart, speaking of Shelton, Roger Shelton has already moved up to eighth and in total tonight. I mean, what a night it's been. He's currently up again to that eighth position, but in general, he's up 23 positions overall from where he started this race at. Now, that is one of the independent drivers, so he doesn't have a big team to work with. And to put together a run like this and a setup like this at a track like this, he's certainly got to feel like it's a win if he can maintain that position, maybe even better it here a little bit more before this thing is all said and done. The 20 of Ryan Shiro currently sitting in that seventh spot. Good run for him as well. Thomas O'Hara rounding out your top 10, one of the rookies last season who did a phenomenal job. But right now, all eyes still up front with Austin Fitzgerald leading with now 21. They had 20 and a half laps to go. Got to wonder here, does Scott Glasso, Taiyo Polito, do they have anything in terms of trying to get back up here with the leaders? Looks like Taiyo Polito is going to slip up off of four. That gives Quentin Clark a run. And the double zero should be able to get clear here before they get down into turn number one. Adam Johnson back in sixth as Ryan Shiro still in seventh. So Fitzgerald has that gap at about three-tenths of a second. Boy, Tyler Marble, let me tell you, he is working right now for all he is worth here tonight. Again, we talked about it. There's no more tire saving really at this point. You know, I, if you're planning on another caution and you don't have any tires left and you're not in the lead, maybe. But if you're Tyler Marble here, I just don't see it. You see there, he's slipping and sliding a little bit here off of the turns and it's working right now, but you see exactly what just happened right here. He gets into turn number three, a little bit hot, and you start to ask yourself, is he burning off those rear tires a little bit too quick by doing that? And as a result, is he potentially here going to run out of tires by the time we get to the end of this race? Now, interestingly enough, he's taking a much different approach here to the corner than Austin Fitzgerald, and it looks like he gains a little bit on exit, but it's not much, and it must not be enough to make an eye difference because it looks like actually... Fitzgerald is still holding strong, maybe even gapping him here just ever so slightly. But it's kind of the entry to the corner actually now, all of a sudden where Tyler's really starting to gain as he rolls a little bit of that higher entry. He's able to get on the brakes a little bit later and kind of does that arc diamond down. We'll see if Fitzgerald tries to change his line. Ooh, looks like he did a little bit that time as he rolled the middle. Didn't diamond it, but he got another good run off there as Tyler Marble didn't quite get the run through that corner that he was looking for. And it's so interesting how two separate lines like this for two drivers can produce two different results. And, of course, the way your setup is is going to play a factor in that. We saw that Tyler Marble, of course, was not shifting. And you wonder if that's playing a little bit of difference right now because Austin Fitzgerald is. Look at the dashboard there. You see fifth and then shifts down to fourth. And, of course, when you downshift, you get a little bit of engine braking as well as a little bit of better acceleration. That's the whole reason you do it. And right now, it's again working out pretty well. At least it seems like for the moment for Austin Fitzgerald. Saw a little bit of lap traffic there in the far distance, and you can see it on the track map. It could play a role here before this race is all said and done. And for Tyler Marble, the big news with that is can he stay close enough to utilize that lap traffic? And not right now. Looks like now Fitzgerald has restretched that gap all the way up to seven tenths of a second, almost a second here going into turn number three. And so Fitzgerald wants as much breathing room as he can get, but more importantly, he wants these next 12 laps to go by as quick as humanly possible. He wants to get to that white flag because with what we've seen tonight, there is no telling that this race is anywhere close to being over until we do see that white flag. And the race is, of course, official. Well, one more time while we have the chance, going to go through your running order here tonight before we kind of wind this thing down and keep all eyes focused on the front of the field. Anthony Hanley, Jacob Musso, Troy Baker, Wes Hurd Jr., Brett Spod, Brian Conklin, Michael Mueller, Jeff Shutt, Alan Pajari, or excuse me, actually all the way just to Michael Mueller, 33rd on back. Those guys have all had to retire from the race. Jeff Shutt back in 32nd right now. Not the run that he wanted tonight by any means. And just in front of Jeff Shutt, Alan Pajari. Bill Benedict in 30th, Cody Matthews in 29th. He was involved in a couple incidents. As well tonight, Brandon Saylor in the 24 had a good run going late, but after that contact, some of the last, I mean, you see a damage on the 24, but I think being involved a little bit in some of those last couple incidents we had, including the one that brought out the last caution between 
course, Tyler Marble and Jeffrey Souza, part is what partially led the 24 to where he stands now. It's certainly not showing the speed he had. Mark Sabak, the Canadian driver, in 27th with Christopher Hall in 26th. Jeffrey Souza, 25th with Greg Bartlett in 24th. Danny Gutierrez, 23rd. Glenn Grigsby in 22nd. Todd Shiro in 21st with Jay Kixon in 20th. Jared Bundy in 19th. Nick Sitchie in 18th. Andy Moraz, 17th. Jeff Marble in 16th. Johnny McCulchuk for No Excuses Racing. Great run right here for him. He is in 15th. Andrew Russo, 14th. Kenneth Bartholomew in 13th. Kyle Oakley, 12th. Thomas O'Hara in 11th. Tracy Powers in 10th. Ryan Haynes, 9th. Roger Shelton in 8th. Ryan Shiro still holding on to that 7th spot, up 30 from where he started this race at. Adam Johnson in 6th. Ty Eo Polito, the rookie for Dynamic Autosport, rounding out the top 5. Quentin Clark in 4th with Scott Glasso in 3rd. Tyler Marble in 2nd. And Austin Fitzgerald is currently being scored as your leader. 1.6 seconds the gap as now. Marble has used up his stuff, and the battle for 2nd is on Scott Glasso. Looking to the inside of the 48 as now. Some fire out of the pipes. You got to wonder there, is the 48 all of a sudden trying to downshift here? And it doesn't look like it. He's committed. That might be the gear ratio he's set in. I don't think he's going to be able to necessarily change it now, but he is able to fend off the charge, at least that lap, from Scott Glasso. And all this battling, if these two aren't careful, could potentially pull Quentin Clark up into the mix as well. Six, make it five and a half laps to go, actually, for your leader. And they're almost two seconds by now. The harder they race, the farther away Austin Fitzgerald's going to pull away. So at this point, Fitzgerald could basically put it on cruise control. But he's not going to do that because, again, he wants to get to the white flag, make this race official as soon as possible. And he has got just four laps left before that will be the case. Oh, man. We saw Dynamic Autosports firing on all cylinders out of the gate. And it wasn't Austin Fitzgerald necessarily getting a win, but it was pretty close with quite a few podiums and seeing, of course, his rookie teammate, Jake Hickson, get a few wins right out of the gate, pushing him to one of those wins at Atlanta. And now here tonight, we come to a technical track. He's had a couple of big chances at a couple tracks that we've been to so far this season. Can't forget about Bristol just a couple weeks ago. Dominated that race, but then, well, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd say dominated. Certainly not like he has tonight, but certainly had a fast car in that race. But at the end, got to racing in a late race restart. Got involved with another car, spun around. That brought his night to an end there. Looked like it was going to be, again, potentially his first shot at a win. Things did not quite work out. But here we are tonight at Richmond, the next short track since then. And Austin Fitzgerald has been absolutely lights out so far here tonight. Two laps to go at Richmond. Last lap for a caution. This will be probably, in his mind, the fastest lap he can run all race. Trying everything here just to get to this white flag and make this race official. As we go to the TV3 cam, you can see everybody else on track looking pretty smooth. A little bit of two-by-two two action. The battle for second between Scott Glass and Tyler Marble could come all the way down to the finish. And here we go. White flag in the air. This race is official. Two sets of corners to go for Austin Fitzgerald. Multiple wins last season. But it was really after he got that first win when the hot streak started that led all the way into the postseason and led him to a championship four appearance. Now he knows he'll have a chance to go for a playoff run again because he is going to win it at Richmond. First win of the season for the veteran for Dynamic Autosports, Austin Fitzgerald. Is your Richmond Spring 200 winner. Battle for second goes to Tyler Marble. Scott Glass rounds out your podium. Boy, it was a dominant performance, and you certainly can't say he didn't earn this one. Led the most laps all night by far. Had to get through some little bit of animosity, if you will, with some of the cautions that we had, but got cleaned up here towards the end. And that last run we had, while a short one, Austin Fitzgerald was still able to get the job done, proved that he had the short run speed and the long run speed here tonight. And as he burns it down on the front stretch, gives us a chance to look at the rest of your results after your podium. Of course, we saw Fitzgerald with the win. Tyler Marble in second. Scott Glasso third. Quentin Clark in fourth. Ty Polito in fifth. Ryan Shiro finishes back in sixth. Adam Johnson in seventh. Roger Shelton in eighth with Tracy Powers ninth. And Kyle Oakley rounding out your top ten. Thomas O'Hara finishes 11th. Kenneth Bartholomew in 12th. Ryan Haynes in 13th with Andrew Russo in 14th.
Johnny Mikulchuk in 15th with Jeff Marble in 16th. Andrew Mraz, after a tough night, still going to be able to salvage a top 20. He finishes in that 17th position. Back in 18th, it's going to be the 13 of Nick Sitchie. Good recovery for him as well. Running at your top 20 here tonight is going to be Jared Bundy and Jake Hicks. And Todd Shiro, 21st. Glenn Grigsby in 22nd. Danny Gutierrez, 23rd. Greg Bartlett in 24th. Jeffrey Souza, 25th. Christopher Hall, 26th. Mark Zabak, 27th. Brendan R. Saylor in 28th. Running at your top 30, Bill, or excuse me, Cody Matthews and Bill Benedict in the 90 car. Alan Pajari finishes 31st. Jeff Shutt, 32nd. Michael Mueller, 33rd. Brett Spod, 34th. Brian Conklin, 35th. Troy Baker, 36th. Wester Jr. in 37th. Jacob Musso in 38th. Anthony Hanley running out in the field tonight. He finishes in 39th. All right, well, we are going to go get your top three in here for interviews. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Richmond. All right, back live at Richmond Race. We're going to start first tonight with your third place finisher, Scott Glasso. Scott, this is Austin. The booth got a copy. And we'll try him again here. Maybe getting some things set up. Hey, Scott, this is Austin up in the booth. Got a copy. Doesn't look like we got him right now, so. We'll go ahead and give him a minute, see if he can get some of those things sorted out and try to pull him back up here after we talk to your top two. So with that, we'll try this again, but this time I'm going to start with your second place finisher, Tyler Marble. Tyler, this is also for the booth. You got a copy? Yes, I do. Well, you bring home second tonight at one of the most tough, or excuse me, one of the toughest tracks on the circuit. But man, at the end there, 25 laps to go. You find yourself in second. Similar restart to what we saw to start the race. What more do you think you needed there to have something for your leader with 25 to go? I don't know. Austin was just damn, damn fast, damn consistent. Uh, yeah, I, I almost got the outside to work uh, on that last restart. Timed it pretty well. Just he had a better turn one and two the uh, next lap, and then uh, yeah, drove away. Ah, I don't know. The car was just it, it, it was it was solid, but probably could have. Uh, Use a little bit more short run speed, I guess, is what you're looking for. So, yeah, it is what it is. Nice P2, nice rebound, and we'll take it. Certainly was. I mean, we saw you involved in a couple different incidents tonight. First one was with your own teammate there. We know that there was contact, of course, with a third car, and then later with Jeffrey Susan. You know, as a driver at a track that's so rhythm-based, how do you keep yourself in a rhythm after getting involved in situations like that? Yeah, it's, it's tough. Just got to shake it off and apologize and move on and, yeah, I I hate uh, putting you know any teammate, especially my own man, on the wall. But it, it was just my dumb mistake trying to race the 97 too hard there, too early in the race. And then uh, the deal with Sue, it was just good hard, good hard racing them. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to him, but uh, yeah, not my proudest race. But uh, you almost had to be a little aggressive to get track position to maintain it. So it's so hard to pass here. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk with uh, Susa though, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll clean it up. Absolutely. Well, before we let you head out tonight and celebrate the podium finish, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? Yeah, I like. To, I like to thank you uh, for broadcasting. This uh, sounds like you're a little under the weather. If I'm right, uh, we'll get better, man. Uh, fast tracks or uh, yeah, the uh, title sponsor, Alloy Wheel Repair Specialist. Uh, Sim Racer Hub, Butt Kicker, uh, Donnie Adams Act Designs, uh, Bushnell Motorsports Park, uh, and everybody, everybody showing, we had 39 cars tonight, that's awesome, let's keep it up, uh, thank everybody for watching, and, uh, let's go, go get it in Myersville. Sounds like a plan, well thank you for talking to us, again, congrats on the third, or excuse me, the second place finish, and we will see you next week. Yep, thank you. All right, and now that'll bring us to your winner here on the night, Austin Fitzgerald. Austin, this is Austin up in the booth. Got a copy. Hey, Austin, I do. Well, you grabbed that elusive first win of the season, and man, 
Last time we saw you get your first win, the hot streak sparked from there. You went deep into the playoffs. How important was this win here tonight? Uh, it's definitely nice to get this monkey off my back. I mean, I, I, I'm really good at throwing, you know, throwing it away in these kind of races where, you know, I lead a lot of laps and then something happens at the end and, you know, I just I screw myself for, you know, late cautions. Um, you know, I prefer the long run and this race had a lot of long runs. So, uh, yeah, it was just it was a great setup this week. And um, I was able just to keep that clean air in the front. Uh, there was a couple times some guys almost got by me, but I desperately did not want to give up that lead because just the handling of the car changes so much when you're behind cars. And that's why I'd hit lap traffic and it's just like hitting a brick wall. So clean air was everything. Well, it certainly seemed like tonight you had a car that was pretty good on both the short run and long run, but especially stood out when we got those long runs. Now, I know we did have quite a few restarts at different points, but man, when we had that last restart, I had to push harder than you had to all night. Now, I think my question here, what I'm trying to ask you is, how was it that you had a car that was that fast on the short run to defend everybody while also that fast in the long run? Uh, you know what? Like I said, having the clean air really helps um, and just you know, I guess it was just about finding that balance, pushing it just enough, you know, to be fast enough to hold the lead on that short run. And, you know, but yet save enough, break in early, don't overdrive the corners enough to the point where, you know, you save something for the long run. Not, you know, it's great having the lead because everybody wants to, you know, have that advantage on you drive in deeper. And when you're in the lead, your focus is just don't overdrive it, you know, and this isn't an easy track to pass on. So you, you could break in early and they're kind of forced to, hit, you know, hit the brakes. Um, but yeah, no, it definitely was fast on the, on the short run. And yeah, it, it was just a great setup. So I'm, I'm stoked to get this win. Hopefully locks me into the playoffs and, uh, yeah, maybe go on a hot streak here. Sounds like a plan. Well, hey, before we let you out here tonight to go celebrate in victory lane, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? Yeah, uh, like the shout out team, Dynamic Auto Sports. Uh, they're just a bunch of great guys, you know, thanks to uh, Jake and, and Ty and Brandon and Alan and, you know, all the work those guys put in. And, uh, you know, it's just we, we help each other out a lot. It's, it's been great this past year being on that team. Uh, and then uh, thanks to, you know, the hosts of this league, uh, Tyler and Jeff, you know, they put on great league. It's it's hard to find racing like this in official where we actually can have some green flag runs. You know, I don't like just pacing under caution. So they put a lot of work into recruiting a lot of good drivers for some, you know, decent races. Um, thank you uh, to you for the broadcast. Uh, thanks to my family, uh, my daughter, Emma Jane. She's seven, but she likes to watch any of these races and the interviews. So shout out to Emma Jane. Love you, baby. Um, shout out to my wife, my other daughter, Indy. And uh, yeah, looking forward to Martinsville next week. Sounds like a plan. Well, thank you for talking to us again. Congrats on that win. We'll see if you make it back to back next week in Martinsville. Thanks, Austin. All right, and that will wrap up our coverage here tonight from Richmond. Man, what a race it was. What a win for Austin Fitzgerald, and I think he put it best. Good to have that monkey off his back. Now he can focus forward, just try to see if he can capture a couple more wins and carry as much momentum into the playoffs as possible. A little bit of a crazy one tonight. A couple more cautions that maybe we were expecting, but nonetheless, Richmond did not disappoint. We'll be back here again in the fall. And we'll, of course, be back next week as well with more of the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series. We'll be at Martinsville. Paperclip, make sure you tune into that one. Tomorrow night, we'll be over on the PGR Esports YouTube channel for Tuesday Night Thunder. Make sure you go check that out. And until next time, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. That's it for me, Austin Green, here on Ghost Racing Network. Have a good night.